Hi everybody, Pete Sardis for The Lawyer You Know, and today we're gonna to talk about the Federal Bureau of Prisons classification process so that we can determine where Elizabeth Holmes might serve her prison sentence, presuming she's sentenced to prison, uh, here in September. But before we do that, as always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're liking the series, please click subscribe to our channel. And as always, leave me questions and comments below, specifically now that we're kind of coming to the end of this series. If you believe that there's another legal topic that you find interesting, let us know what that is. If enough people give me the same topic, we'll focus on that for you and uh, you know, obviously bring you that content. Now, let's talk generally about federal prisons. In the federal system, all inmates that are sentenced to a term of prison, term of, term of incarceration, are classified through the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Now, there are 122 facilities within the purview of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Of those 122, only 29 of them uh, accept female inmates. So right off the bat, you've got a far more difficult task to identify a favorable prison if you're a female inmate as opposed to being a male inmate. How does the process work? All right, the Federal Bureau of Prisons is, breaks down all inmates into five categories. Low, minimum, medium, high, and administrative. Now, again, for female inmates, it gets even more complicated because as opposed to the standard five um, classifications, there are only four, minimum, low, high, and administrative, meaning you lose that medium classification if you're female. Um, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the different uh, classifications so you understand the concepts of high, kind of who goes into what. Obviously, they grow progressively from lowest to highest. Um, there's also administrative. Administrative really means that it is a special designation for a particular corrections facility. For example, it could be the Supermax prison where people are, you know, maybe Hannibal Lecter style, you know, in, in a straight jacket when they come into the facility. It could be a medical facility designation. It could even be an immigration, you know, detention center. So administrative kind of is the catch-all. It's really the other classifications that house prisoners based on uh, what the Bureau of Prisons determines is the risk factors with that particular individual. I will tell you that for our purposes, I'm going to focus on the prisons that are on the western side of the United States simply because the Bureau of Prisons normally attempts to send people to a prison that is within 500 miles of their location of release. Now, does that always happen? No, it doesn't. But for our purposes, I believe that chances are Elizabeth Holmes' lawyers are going to request that she be incarcerated somewhere within California. So I'm gonna focus on that Western uh, district as opposed to telling you about all the women's prisons all throughout the country. All right, with that, let's talk about the classifications. Minimum is the lowest restriction that you can have in the Bureau of Prisons. And it basically means that the people there have the lowest risk of flight, uh, of escape. Their charges are of the, a lower classification. And we're going to go through how, to, kind of how they come up with that. It also has the lowest security measures to include population versus security, meaning guards themselves. It also means they have the least restrictive facilities. For example, minimum facilities don't normally have, you know, barbed wire and, you know, jail cells. And as you go up through the ranks and the categories, the prisoner to security officer ratio decreases, meaning there are more guards compared to the prisoners, and you also have more restrictive confinement. For example, single barbed wire fences or a double row of barbed wire fences, or even like every prisoner is within a jail cell that's locked, things like that. So it goes from minimum all the way up to high. So along with the, the location, obviously trying to keep you within 500 miles of wherever you're going to be released back into society, the Bureau of Prisons takes into account a number of things. Uh, they take into consideration any program needs that a specific offender may have. For example, does the offender not have a high school diploma? Therefore, they need to go to a facility that has educational options, for example, uh, GED courses. Does this particular offender have any specific mental health issues that require, you know, beyond just what we would consider 
you know, run-of-the-mill medical treatment. Uh, is the person's age something that is of concern, meaning do they need to go to a facility, an administrative facility that has a nursing home or, a, you know, assisted living attached to it? Things like that are what the Bureau of Prisons takes into consideration to figure out where somebody should go. How do they do that? As in all things in the government, there is a form, and I'm going to put the form here for you so you can see what it looks like. I'm also going to tag it. I'm just going to put this out there right now. I am not the Bureau of Prisons. I am not a classification specialist. Yes, I've been doing the federal criminal work for a long time, so I understand how the process works. But I want to let you know that there are a lot of minute details that may be different from the way I classify Elizabeth Holmes to the way the Bureau of Prisons classifies her. But again, we're trying to just give you an idea about what you can expect Elizabeth Holmes' sentence is going to look like. So I have taken the liberty of filling out the form. We're going to provide that form for you so you can go take a look at it and, I, and kind of see how the Bureau of Prisons adds up points for classification scoring purposes. Now, it's pretty simple. The higher the amount of points that you have, on the Bureau of Prisons form, the higher your classification is going to be at the Bureau of Prisons, which means the more restrictive facility that you're probably going to wind up being housed in. Recognize for a moment that people with long sentences, more than 10 years, could potentially be in multiple levels of prisons over the course of their uh, of their time in the Bureau of Prisons, simply because as the time progresses, their classification score might change, their risk may go down, their age changes, their needs change, and therefore the security level will potentially go up or down, most of the time down, uh, as you progress through your sentence. So. Again, my purpose is just to kind of give you an idea. I'm not saying that this is set in stone, but it's a pretty good guess about where Elizabeth Holmes could potentially be. If you look at the form, you'll see there are different sections of the form that have a series of points. The first one, and I think is the most interesting one, is the Bureau of Prisons gives you three levels of credit if the court allows you to self-surrender. Now, what does that mean? It actually means that in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, you can actually be given a piece of paper that says, show up to prison at this date and on this time, and you'll be in process. And you literally, somebody drives you down to the prison, and you walk in the front doors, and you surrender yourself to the Bureau of Prisons. If the court allows Elizabeth Holmes to do that, and I think there's a very good chance that the court is going to allow her to do that, simply because she's been out on bond the whole time, she has you know, deep ties to her community, um, she's been convicted and still out on bond, on the supersedious bond right now until sentencing, my gut says the judge is going to allow her to self-surrender. That's going to give her three points credit towards her sentence. As you go down, you'll also see the severity of the crime. Uh, you will see scoring for her age. Now, obviously, she scores the older you get, the less at risk you are from the Bureau of Prisons perspective, just because, obviously, the older you are, the less likely you are to do stupid things or to be violent or to be, you know, a, an escape risk. You know, you can add the, um, you know, add it up from there. Now, what else is there? Your education level. Interestingly enough, the Bureau of P Prisons believes that the more education you have, the less risk you are. Uh, and I'm guessing that they think that because the more educated you are, the less likely, are, again, you are to be violent or to do things that uh, we would see in a lower socioeconomic demographic. Your drug history is important, uh, as is what we call public safety factors. Are you part of a gang? Uh, are you a sex offender? Have you escaped from prison before? Do you have violent tendencies? Have you can, been convicted of uh, violent acts in the past? All of those things, again, designed to determine how much supervision an inmate is going to need at the Bureau of Prisons. Now, I ran the cal calculations. I will just tell you, I come up with about two or three points for Elizabeth Holmes. There are chances she'll have a few more points up, but if you look at the scoring for the Bureau of Prisons, the minimum facility classification is up to and including 11 points, which means if you have zero to 11 points, you're considered a minimum classification. So from my perspective, the only thing that could affect Elizabeth Holmes not being in a minimum prison and potentially going to a low prison is the fact that she may spend 240 months at the facility, at which point the Bureau of Prisons may have to add a classification level simply because they just don't have the housing for all of the inmates that are going to be processing out for 240 months. So there is a chance that she will start at a low facility 
and potentially move her way down into a, um, a minimum facility, she very well may start at a minimum facility and do her entire prison sentence at a minimum facility. But again, that is a Bureau of Prisons decision to make, and it's a little bit fluid based on the bed space they have and the need requirements of other inmates at that time. Again, the hardest part about this is we're scoring Elizabeth Holmes, who happens to be female, and the reality is there's, you know, 20% of the potential facilities than there are for males, so it just makes things a little bit more complicated for Bureau of Prisons to actually put a, you know, a dot on the board and say, this is where this person is gonna be for the entirety of their sentence. So, um, I took the time to look at all the facilities in the Western Division of the Bureau of Prisons. I've determined that she's got about four facilities that she qualifies to be in that are in California within that 500 mile range. Those facilities are Dublin Federal Correctional Institute, and that is in Alameda, California. It is a low facility with an adjacent minimum camp. And, and I should probably be clarified, there are many prisons that have a specific classification, although they'll have a satellite facility that has a small portion of the population of their entire inmate pool that is set there and they normally call that a camp, which means basically it's kind of set aside from the main prison. This facility has 755 total inmates and I'll tell you how it's set up. They have three to four inmates per room. Uh, there are four televisions in a day room. So what it, it looks like is a college dormitory setting. So there are multiple rooms around a common area. That common area we call a day room and there are gonna be you know four televisions there. They have telephones that you can have privileges to for about 300 minutes per month. There is a, a limitation at uh, FCI Dublin and the limitation is you can only use the phone from 6.30 in the morning until 11.30 p.m. There are weekly commissary privileges. And what's a commissary? It's kind of like a mini mart for prisoners, meaning they can buy personal items, they can buy snacks, they can buy just things that they want for themselves. Anything from socks all the way to ramen noodles, uh, tea, coffee, things like that that they want for themselves that are not products that are normally provided for by the Bureau of Prisons, for example. If you just don't like the food that they're serving, you can go to the commissary and buy your own. It's allowed. Uh, there are certain limitations to that. There's apparently a monthly commissary run for this particular facility. Uh, they have, I'm sorry, not monthly, weekly commissary privileges for this facility. Uh, they have arts and crafts. Apparently they have a copper working facility. They have ceramics. You can learn how to, how to deal with leather goods. And uh, they also have intramural sports teams. Apparently those are limited to softball and volleyball. Obviously, religious activities. They have uh, a, a religious services for what I would consider most of the major religions. I would guess there are subsets for different types of Christianity, for example, whether you're a uh, Catholic or you're Protestant, whatever the case may be, all of those are available for you. Now, the other facility that exists that's close by is the Los Angeles MDC, which is a municipal Department of Corrections facility. It actually is a high-rise building in LA. Now, this particular facility is identified as an administrative facility. I looked into it and I think that the chances of Elizabeth Holmes going here are slim. She just, I, I don't think qualifies. The inmates at this particular facility are normally being held without bond for whatever court appearances they may have before they're sentenced. This facility also has a section for people that are what I'll call short timers, short sentences, meaning as people go through the, pro the process, of being in the Bureau of Prisons, they're, you know, as they change classifications, this is one of those facilities where if you're a short timer, meaning you've got less than a year, for example, on your sentence, they will send you here. So I don't think she's eligible for Los Angeles, so I'm not gonna go through the details. That being said, San Diego also has one of these facilities. It's a smaller facility, again, 950 inmates. It is a high-rise building in San Diego, and again, designated for short timers or for people that are being held in custody before they've actually been sentenced or convicted, all right? So we'll take those two out. The next facility that I think uh, Elizabeth Holmes could potentially go to, and I will share with you, I believe this, if I were Elizabeth Holmes, and I were Elizabeth Holmes lawyers, this is the facility that I personally would pick and ask the judge to make a recommendation for to the Bureau of Prisons, and it's called Victorville. 
Victorville Federal Correction Center is in Central California. It's about 85 miles, give or take, north of Los Angeles. It's about 3,000 total inmates. Of those 3,000 total inmates, there are 297 at the moment female inmates at the adjacent minimum satellite camp. Uh, now, let's talk about the programs at this specific facility. Education. They have, of course, GED, but they've also got a series of college courses. So if you wanted to go to law school while you're in prison, you could do that through this facility. They have vocational arts. So if you want to learn how to do anything in the building trades, meaning construction, if you wanted to get involved in horticulture, uh, which is obviously a big deal in this part of California, meaning farming or you know, growing grapes, things like that, you could do that here at Victorville. They have administrative skills learning. So if you wanted to be a secretary or you know, brush up on your Microsoft Office skills, they have certification courses for all of those type of administrative skills there. Uh, you can become a dental assistant at Victorville. And if you really, really want to get crazy, you could get your certificate to become plumbing and HVAC certified. So when you get out of prison, you actually have a piece of paper that says you are a technician certified to do plumbing or uh, heating and air conditioning work. They have a library. They also have a Unicor facility, which I find very interesting. And again, uh, we talked about this a little bit in a couple of the, la the previous videos. Unicor is a jobs program within the Bureau of Prisons. It does pay. The pay is normally minimal. It's either cents or dollars uh, a day. It's very small. And the, real, the reality of it is to give you something to do. Unicorn jobs are normally very coveted amongst a prison simply because you really would rather do something all day than sit inside of your room, you know, staring at the ceiling. So this particular facility has a unicorn job and what they do is they rebuild and refurbish military vehicles. So if you've ever seen a Humvee, for example, on television, which is the army's version of the Jeep, or you've seen military trucks like dump trucks or, you know, uh, convoy vehicles, all of those vehicles are apparently refurbished or rebuilt at the two factories that are on the premises at Victorville. So you can get a job at Unicor rebuilding vehicles. And you would say, who the heck would want to do this? For all you that don't know this, Queen Elizabeth, yes, the queen, during World War II was a wheeled vehicle mechanic in the British military. And that's what she did in the war effort. So it's kind of the same thing here. You'd be basically working in a facility that you know, ref refurbishes, re repairs, rebuilds military trucks. So pretty cool, I thought, for something to do for the next X amount of years. Uh, will she get a Unicorn job there? I don't know, it's possible. Will she want one? It's possible. Because again, even if you don't do that Unicorn job, there are other opportunities because she does have a high school diploma. She doesn't have a college degree technically. So she might be able to teach other inmates things. For example, English as a second language. I'm just giving you examples. She might be able to teach you know, GED courses, things like that. So there's other possibilities to do work outside of just the Unicorn job. But I thought it was pretty cool that they actually have this type of work here at this facility. Now, Housing. Let's talk about housing. Um, housing here is open dormitory style uh, housing, meaning there are no rooms. It is one big open bay with a bunch of beds in it, and there are no bars. There are no cells. No one's locking you in. To make it even further, I don't think Victorville's camp actually has a fence that surrounds it. They very well may have a line painted somewhere on the ground that says, do not cross. And that is as far as you're allowed to go as an inmate. You're going to say, well, what stops anybody from running away? Well, truly nothing except the fear of repercussion of losing your minimum status and of not being able to serve your prison in your prison sentence in the most lenient environment. And I promise you, uh, I've had inmates that are in minimum facilities and they've been in places where it's just a, you know, a line drawn in the concrete that says do not pass. And those inmates avoid those areas at all costs. They don't even want it to look like they're anywhere near that line for fear of losing out on the benefit of being in a minimum facility, which for all intents and purposes is a college dormitory style or a military barracks style of living. Let's talk about recreation. They have hobbies and crafts here at Victorville, art, leatherworking, and ceramics. They have sports programs with, and I might add, professional trainers. So basketball, 
volleyball, handball, soccer, softball. They have a jogging track and an indoor cardio equipment room. And if you're not good at any of these things, you can just ask one of the trainers to help you and you can learn to be a better volleyball player or you can learn how to really use that cardio equipment to the best of your ability and to the degree it's designed to be worked at by simply asking one of the coaches or the professional trainers that are provided to the inmates by the Bureau of Prisons thanks to your U.S. tax dollars. What else do they have? Various music programs. Apparently they have all types of acoustic instruments so you can learn how to play an instrument and be in the band. Religious services, obviously for all denominations and faiths. Commissary privileges. Now, the interesting part about Victorville is they have a commissary privilege, but they did not indicate a time restriction. Remember I told you at, um, at Dublin, they had one time monthly commissary privilege Victorville does not have that, that limitation. It just says that they have it, but it doesn't say that it's limited in any way. I know that there is a $360 spending limit per month that exists there, but that's as far as it goes. So I'm guessing you can go to the commissary whenever you have free time to go. Phone privileges. Bureau of Prisons, I think standard 300 minutes per month. And let me be clear about that. It is 300 personal minutes per month. And what I mean by that is if your lawyer wants to speak with you, they call the Bureau of Prisons and they set up a conference call with you through your classifications officer at the Bureau of Prisons at your facility. And Elizabeth Holmes could literally sit on the phone all day long talking to her lawyers and it would not affect her 300 minutes per month. Legal calls are exempt from this and they do it purposely because it makes life easier obviously for the lawyers, which we appreciate, being able to speak to our clients whenever they have available timing. The Bureau of Prisons basically says, whenever a lawyer needs to talk to a client, we will make the accommodation to let that lawyer interact. And understand the reason is lawyers have time limits, you know, appeal, you know, briefs are due on specific, within specific days, things like that happen. So the Bureau of Prisons recognizes the constitutional right for that person to be able to speak with their lawyer. So we can talk to our clients as much as we want. But for the 300 minutes of month, uh, Elizabeth Holmes can speak with her family and friends. Uh, apparently whenever she wants or whenever she has time, because again, Victorville does not have any time limitations like Dublin does from six in the morning or 6.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. That's about it. There is visitation, I should have said this, in all of these facilities. The facilities that I mentioned that we didn't really talk about in Los Angeles or in San Diego because they're big structures, right now they have COVID restrictions, so they do not allow anybody actually in the building for face-to-face, hand-to-hand contact. So all the visitation is being done by video, which let's be real kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Victorville and Dublin both indicate that they are have COVID restrictions, but it does not appear as if they're stopping or precluding uh, inmates from having contact visitation. So what does that mean? Your friends and family, loved ones can put themselves on a list. The Bureau of Prisons will vet those people, meaning they'll just do a background check to know exactly who these folks are and they come into the prison and they can sit on a picnic table and have contact and visitation for however much time, um, I believe on a weekly basis uh, at either one of these facilities. So you get to see your friends and family. So again, if it were me and I were Elizabeth Holmes and I were her lawyers, I'd be picking Victorville. I think it's probably the least restrictive, nicest place you could do your time in California. If not there, maybe Dublin, because again, it is a low facility, so for classification doesn't exactly work. Also not very restrictive. And that's what I would do if I were them. From this point forward, I don't really know what to tell you. Until she's sentenced, the Bureau of Prisons is not gonna do a classification for her. Once that classification happens, they'll you know, basically notify her and her attorneys uh, about what her classification is. It really is not something that's public record. Uh, they don't, we can go obviously find out, but once she's actually sentenced and goes to the Bureau of Prisons, you can actually look her up on the BOP.gov website and you can actually put in any inmates, inmate number or their name. You can pull them up and you can actually see where they're located, uh, what facility they're in, uh, their picture, and it'll also tell you when their prospective release date is. So that's something you can do on your own. We'll, we'll do that for you later. But at this point, that's about all there is. Tell me what you think. Uh, if you were Elizabeth Holmes, where would you want to spend your prison time at the Bureau of Prisons? Other than that, the next time I think what we'll do is I will walk through for you the intake process for the Bureau of Prisons. So how do you actually get to how do you go to prison and how do you get in processed in, what your day-to-day life will look like and you know how, how life will be. I'll do a video on that because I did get some questions about that last time. But as always, 
If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you've enjoyed the series, please subscribe. And always, please, 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 questions, comments, leave them down below. And if you have other legal topics you're interested in, please let me know what they are so we can figure out what the next round will be. So with that, thank you for joining me. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching this episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you like this content, please share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to our page and like our videos. If you want some interaction, get in the comments and we'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to know any more information about our firm or this page, you can find out in the description or visit tragoslaw.com. We post multiple times throughout the week, so make sure you hit that bell so you can get the notification and not miss out on the next episode.